Well, good morning and happy Father's Day to my dad and to all you other dads out there as well. You know, I never knew the importance of the role of fatherhood until I really became one myself. So I just want to start out today by letting all of you know how much you are loved and appreciated. And I want to encourage all of us, myself included, to continue leading well. You know, the Bible tells us that we are to be the spiritual leaders of our households. And I just want to come alongside you today to say that we're all in this together and we can draw strength from each other as we do our very best to live out the role that God has called us to. So no matter if you're a girl dad, a boy dad, a granddad, or even a great granddad, you have a very important job and one that I believe is vital to the overall health of our society. So keep up the good work, know that you are loved and you're desperately needed. And if you're listening today and you don't have that father figure in your life for whatever reason, let me just remind you that God is the father to the fatherless and he can fill any void. So lean on him today and every day as you look for that guidance and leadership in your life. Well, as you know, we've been uh, in the study of Proverbs for the last few weeks. And last week we covered the first half of Proverbs chapter three. So this week we're gonna finish up the second half of Proverbs chapter three. You know, up until this point, the main topic of discussion has been wisdom and how we can attain that wisdom in our lives. But today we're gonna shift gears a little bit and we're gonna hear from, from King Solomon some practical application of that God-given wisdom that we all should be striving for. You know, one thing Solomon has made clear to us already in this study is that knowledge and wisdom must be applied in our daily lives in order to live in the fullness that God wants from all of us. So today we're gonna to look at the first area of life that Solomon mentions when talking about putting our God-given wisdom into good use. The title of our lesson today is Compassion Demonstrated. And I think this is a very timely lesson and one that hopefully will resonate with all of us during this very tumultuous season in the life of our country. As you know, things are quite volatile right now and people are finding themselves in the middle of some very difficult societal issues. You know, there seems to be a great deal of arguing and finger pointing going on and very little understanding and cooperation. And unfortunately, you need look no further than your social media pages to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, my personal social media uh, presence is not all that substantial, but I'd be lying to you today if I didn't say I log on every day to figure out what's going on in the world around me. Social media has somewhat taken the place of our newspapers and our six o'clock news. We get a lot of our information through places like Facebook and Twitter. But in recent weeks, the viewpoints being shared on those types of platforms have been so heated, so negative, so vile, that I've made a conscious effort to stay away from it if at all possible. Social media has some wonderful benefits, but it also allows everyone to share their opinions openly and publicly, no matter how hurtful or hateful they may be. So I guess you would say that we tend, to, we tend to throw a lot of punches and we fail to offer up any real constructive ideas or advice. Or to put it another way, we seem to have lost what King Solomon tells us about in Proverbs chapter 3. We've lost all compassion for our fellow man. And we seem to be on the attack more now than we've been in quite some time. But as the church, we need to strive to do things differently. And that's what I want us to think about today. So this lesson will speak to us on a large scale level, like dealing with the racial injustice in our country and the unfair blame that's been placed on all of our brave police officers that serve us so well because of the horrible actions of just a few. And it will speak to us on a smaller scale too by reminding us that we are to help our neighbor when they are in need and never hold back when we can do something to help. So let's go ahead and dive into our text today and let's get started. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Proverbs chapter three. And I want us to begin today by looking at one verse to maybe help kickstart our lesson 
and then we'll shift our focus to our main text. So let's begin today with Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at verse 21 together. Turn with me there. Verse 21 says, My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. Let me read that for you one more time. Solomon says, My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. So remember, Solomon is writing this as a father to his son, which is appropriate for us today on Father's Day. And he's giving him a life lesson. It's a reminder to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, to act wisely and with sound judgment. Don't let the outside world influence how you live your life and how you treat other people. Don't make poor decisions based on what's happening around you. This was sound advice then, and I believe it's still sound advice for all of us today as well. And then Solomon gets into very practical aspects of the, of the, the book for us in the latter part of it. Jump down to verse 27 with me, and let's pick up there. Chapter 3, starting in verse 27. Solomon writes, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. Now, I imagine just about all of us were taught the golden rule when we were growing up, right? I imagine you're probably saying it in your head right now. It's something like this. Treat others the way you want to be treated. We're taught that at home, at school, and of course, at church. In Luke chapter 6, verse 31, Luke tells us, do to others as you would have them do to you. It's one of the basic life principles that we all learn as kids, but one we struggle to put into practice as adults. Our society is so highly competitive and, dare I even say, selfish when it comes to our own personal gain and personal desires. It's like we've been programmed to get what is ours before anyone else can get it. We tend to watch out for number one while everything else plays second fiddle. Somewhere along the way, we ignored the words of Proverbs 3 and we lost sight of those around us. And even worse than that, we started seeing ourselves as more worthy and everyone else as less worthy for some unfounded reason. You know, when we look for words, positive words, to describe us as people, compassion isn't one we usually choose. And the reason for that, I assume, is because compassion may sound a bit weak. In America, we would rather use words like strong and determined and focused and driven to describe ourselves. But Scripture tells us that compassion and love and understanding are traits we should all try to find in ourselves because that's who God wants us to be and that's who God is. Have you ever heard anyone say, God sure is driven? No, not really, but we do hear people say things about God's love and His compassion. You know, it is through His compassion that He seeks us, that He calls us to Himself, and that He ultimately saves us. So shouldn't we show that same type of compassion in our own lives, and not just to some, but to all? A few years ago, a movie came out called Wonder, and it's the story of a, a little 10-year-old boy named Augie Pullman. Now, Augie suffered from a, a terrible condition that caused severe facial deformities called Treacher Collins Syndrome. He had been homeschooled his entire life until after his 27th surgery when his parents finally felt he was ready for middle school. Well, as we all know, middle school can be a, a difficult place for anybody, but for a new kid with facial deformities, it was horrible. Augie would wear masks and helmets sometimes to conceal his identity. His favorite was an astronaut helmet. 
and he would wear those to school to give him a bit of anonymity as he walked in. But of course, he wasn't allowed to wear them in class. So when he took the mask off or took the helmet off, it opened him up to all sorts of abuse from the other students. But as the story plays out, you see some kids come to his aid. They befriend him and they considered him one of their own, not out of pity, but out of love and compassion. They saw Augie for who he was and not for what he looked like. And because of those students, Augie was able to make the transition from homeschool to middle school. And he would go on to win the award for courage and strength at the end of the year as voted on by his fellow classmates. And one of the taglines from that movie is, in a world where you can be anything, choose kind. Here's a t-shirt that my son actually got when, before he started middle school that echoes that same sentiment. In a world where you can be anything, choose kind. And you know, the choice is really ours. We can choose to be loving and compassionate. We can choose to help others when they need it and not just when it's convenient. We can choose to support each other and not tear each other down. In the words of Augie Pullman, we can all choose kind. One thing I've learned in recent weeks is that simply believing something and holding to certain values isn't enough. We are called to act on those beliefs and live them out in everything that we do. Verse 27 that we just read says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Notice, Solomon doesn't just say we need to know that showing compassion is the right thing to do. He says, go out and be compassionate when you have the chance. Show others the love that you have when they need it and don't hold it back from them. And then we can also take it one step further by looking to Jesus as our example. You know, there's a challenge that Jesus gave all to all of us back in Matthew chapter 5. You remember the verse? He said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, that takes it to another level, doesn't it? That starts to get a little bit more difficult for us because we're all willing to love those around us that we like. But Jesus tells us to love even those we don't like, and even more, to love those who don't like us. You remember the story from your Bibles of Jesus in the upper room that night he was going to be arrested. He's sitting at the table with his disciples. They're celebrating the Passover meal, and he knows that death awaits him. And the last lesson he teaches his disciples that night is one of humility. When he takes the towel and the water basin and he goes around the room and he washes the feet of all of his disciples, all 12 of them. Yes, all 12 of them, including Judas. Jesus knew that Judas was getting ready to betray him and turn him over to the Jewish leaders. But even in that moment, Jesus loved enough to wash the feet of his enemy, the one who would turn him in to be killed. You see, Jesus set the standard for us. We are to love and show compassion to everyone, even those we disagree with, even those who post awful things on social media. We are to love and show compassion regardless. Treat others the way you want to be treated. It sounds so easy, but we all know that it's not. It requires wisdom, the wisdom of God, to put that type of love into action. And will we be recognized on a grand stage for choosing kindness? No, probably not. But I read an old quote from a newspaper article written years ago that I think reminds us of the importance of living our lives this way. The writer of the article said this, the majority of us lead quiet, unheralded lives as we pass through this world. There will most likely be no ticker tape parades for us, no monuments created in our honor. But that does not lessen our possible impact, for there are scores of people waiting for someone just like us to come along, people who will appreciate our compassion and our unique talents. 
someone who will live a happier life merely because we took the time to share what we had to give. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. It's overwhelming to consider the continuous opportunities there are to make our love felt. And that's what I believe Solomon is saying to us today in Proverbs chapter 3. We are to reflect Christ in all that we do. Love the way He loves. Be compassionate the same way He is compassionate. And remember that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's compassion. And that's what we need to show more of today in the midst of this social unrest in our country. We can't fix a broken world, but we certainly can do our part to make it a better place. So dads, I challenge you today to not only teach your children about compassion, but to show it to them, to live it out in front of them so that they will grow up to be compassionate in their own lives. Put your God-given wisdom into practice by choosing to treat others with love, respect, and kindness. Choose kind today. And show others the love of Jesus in your actions and in your words. It's not enough to simply believe it. We must act on it too. And I believe that's the lesson for all of us in Proverbs chapter 3. Next week we'll jump into Proverbs chapter 4. and We'll look at another choice that we all have to make. But until then, I hope you have a great day. I want to wish all of you a happy Father's Day once again. And I hope you'll be back with us next week. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do thank you for being our Father and showing us what fatherhood should really look like. And Lord, I want to lift up all the fathers out there listening to me today. Lord, I want to lift them up to you in a special way and just pray that your blessings will be upon them. Help them lead their families well. Help them fulfill the role that you have set before them to the best of their abilities. And Lord, I pray that they'll give you all honor and glory because of it. And Lord, as we live in a very difficult time, in a difficult world, Lord, I do pray that we will remember the words of Solomon in Proverbs chapter 3, to be compassionate, to be loving and understanding of those around us, to offer ourselves to everyone when they are in need. Lord, I do pray that we can all consciously choose kindness. So Lord, help us do that. Give us the strength needed to do that. It's not an easy road, but it's the road that you have set before us. Lord, we thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word. And Lord, I pray that you were glorified by everything that was said today. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.